Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and this is the Lace Dirt Design Studio. So I am prepping for our next event right now, which is Vintage Days, and that is a local show to me. It's in Fresno, California, and it's an annual outdoor event that they do at the local college, Fresno State. And this is kind of a different thing than I'm doing usually because I'm not technically part of Vintage Days, but part of the Anime Gaming Con section of Vintage Days. So rather than being in an outside booth like they usually are, we will be inside the Student Union building. And I'll throw up a handy map here so you can know where to find me. And we'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So I don't have an exclusive event sticker for this one because, well, to be honest, it kind of came together the very last minute and I have been focusing on other stuff so I didn't really have time to think about one. But I will be putting together a bunch of mystery bags. I haven't had mystery bags since I think SAC Anime in January, and I thought it would be fun to make them together. Mystery bags are always some of my best sellers at conventions, and honestly I get a lot of people asking how I go about putting stuff in them, so I thought it would be interesting to show you guys how I kind of think my way through putting together mystery bags and give some tips on what makes them great sellers. But first, I have something really exciting to share with you. So one of the things that I am trying to do on my goals list for quarter two is start a gratitude journal. And I can't believe the timing of this affiliate invitation because Clever Fox decided to send me one. And I haven't opened it yet. They also sent me a daily planner, which I know I already have a daily planner, but I have other plans for this. But I want to unbox these with you guys and take a peek inside and see what it looks like. Okay, we should be far away from sticker noises now, but look at how cute this is. They let me pick out the colors. Um, I gave them a selection and yellow was the one that they chose for me. But this is so cute. It's got all of these little like doodles on it. And this thing is like chunky. I'm really excited to break into this. And the daily planner, I haven't even opened this yet. Um, they gave me in, I think this is considered periwinkle, but this thing's even chunkier. And it came with a ton of stickers. So like, I'm really excited to get into this. So let's open these up. Okay, I'm gonna do the gratitude journal first because this is the thing that I really wanted and it's relevant to my goals for this quarter. Okay, so I've already kind of started to take this off. There's another warranty card inside. Um, this is interesting. How to use, exercise and review. So here's the journal. It also has a, oh, there's stickers in there too. There's an elastic band and it's kind of metallic, which is neat. I feel like this thing's gonna last me quite a while. So it looks like there's prompts and stuff, which is nice. Oh, this is like, oh, this is it, okay. Everything is the same. These are nice thick pages too. I'm used to my really thin pages in my forest planner. And then there's a pocket in the back with more stickers very shiny stickers. I don't know that I'll use these, but it's nice to have them. So yeah, it looks like there's some dotted pages in the back. It looks like this is, each day has, oh, some of these were different. There we go. There's some stuff in here that's different, like every, Oh, it's every week, I see, okay. Interesting, so it's broken down, it's undated, which I really like. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, and then since this is seven, then there's weekly exercises, weekly review, and then into the next. So it looks like every week has a different exercise. Oh, and then there's monthly. This is really cool. This is going to, I was gonna try to slowly get into gratitude journaling, 
and do like, like, I don't know, write down one thing that made me happy that day or something that I can just do as I feel like it and then get into doing it daily. But this is really set up to like help me do it every day, which is exciting. And I'll get into the planner probably in another time because this is the thing that I want to focus on this week. Because literally one of my big goal tasks for this week was to pick out a gratitude journal. So literally the timing is perfect. And if you guys are interested in ordering your own Clever Fox gratitude journal or any of their other very handy uh, journals or notebooks, you can use this link right here to pick out your own. So I have already been using the gratitude journal and I really, really love it. And even if it's like a twice a day sit down and fill out the whole spread, like. I've really started to get into the habit of it and I'm already really excited to get to like the weekly and the monthly portions. So if you guys are interested in grabbing your own Clever Fox Gratitude Journal or any of their other amazing things, use this code for 10% off your first order. So my very first step for making mystery bags is to cut out the labels. And I've honestly gone through several versions of this label over the years. This is actually four of them up on one sheet and you can't see the border, but it'll cut with like a little scallop edge, kind of like a candy bag. So this has been amazing the way that it is, even though it's probably due for a refresh just visually, but I found that having the items that you can get inside listed on the bag and the price has been really great. Plus they're cute. So let's go ahead and get these cut and then we can start assembling some bags. Okay, these are all done being cut, and I like to cut these first just because they're easier to apply to the bags, so they're not bulky and harder to lay flat when they're filled with stuff. So I will go ahead and put these on the bags and then we can get packing. All right, now that these are all done, let me pull out all the stuff that's gonna go inside. So there are a wide variety of things, as you can see, that I put into my mystery bags because they're a great way to get rid of stuff that's just taking up space while offering the customer a great deal and a little taste of everything that I do. So some of the types of merch that I put into my mystery bags are B-grade stuff, which means that it's something that's like slightly flawed but still usable, slightly miscut stickers, like this one for example, it's off center, but the actual sticker itself is not. It's just the peel edge. Sometimes I put in overstock of items that don't sell very quickly, retired items, like a bunch of these stickers, unpopular Patreon leftovers, or items that just didn't turn out quite as I expected, like these mini periwinkle notebooks. 
It's also super important to let people know in some capacity if you're putting B-grade items in the bags, which is why I have mine right on the bag, because some people don't want stuff that's flawed, even if it's like only noticeable by the artist. Some people just don't wanna take that chance. And some people don't even notice that the things are B-grade, but be sure to just let them know. So depending on what types of items I've accumulated is going to determine how I end up divvying stuff up, because I do my best to not do as many duplicate things in each bag as I possibly can, but obviously that's not always going to be possible. So I have $10 mystery bags and I have $20 mystery bags. And again, depending on what I have, it depends on how I divvy them up, but I do try to save the more expensive items for the more expensive bags. So like my memo pads and the little notebooks and probably the zipper pouches will go in the $20 bags. But because I have a lot of old postcard artwork and enamel pins and keychains, those usually go in here. You'll still find some of them in the $20 bags, but that'll be like an extra thing on top of the bigger items. These ones will you'll, you'll get pins, keychains, prints, and usually a ton of stickers. But regardless of what goes in either one of them, I try to load them up as much as I can so you're still getting a lot of stuff for really not a lot of money. Normally it's easiest for me to lay out all the bags that I can so that way I can start just putting the items on top. That makes it so much easier when it comes time to stuff them that I already know what's going into each bag that I have all of the correct combinations of everything so I'm not putting duplicates of anything into any bag and everything has about the same amount of stuff in it. So I'll lay them out all like this and I'll usually start with something like the postcard prints. And if I have duplicates of one design, I'll spread them out. That's right. So I have two that don't have postcard prints. So what I'm gonna do for those is put a patch in them. So a base item is already in all of these. Now it's time to do keychains. I have tons of keychains and magnets and stuff. So I'm just gonna put one in each of these. Then they'll each get an enamel pin. I have a lot of duplicates of some of my enamel pin designs because I just restocked a couple of them if you watched last week's vlog. So I'm doing my best to kind of spread them out. So you're not only getting clover periwinkles or mothmans. These are feeling a little unstuffed, so I'm going to put a button in each of these. And these are buttons that I did a collab of artwork with my friend Newt, Newt Does Arts. I did the artwork and they made the button designs and pressed the buttons. And if you're interested, this is a great starter item for Artist Alleys. If you're interested in heart-shaped buttons, they have opened their own button pressing business, similar to my sticker cutting business, called Newt Does Buttons. So you can get really super cute heart-shaped buttons for super cheap while also supporting an artist. All right, so these are feeling a little bit better to me now and I'm just gonna load them up with stickers. Right. these are all laid out. They have the exact amount of things in them that I want. So let's start stuffing.
So the $20 bags, like I mentioned, will get a lot of the same items as the $10 bags, but I'm out of postcards now, so I'm gonna have to probably do something else instead of those. But I also am really low on a variety of enamel pins, so I may not put any enamel pins in the $20 bags. And usually I will use bags like the $10 ones to put those in, but since I have a lot of the bigger items, I'm gonna use these paper bags with handles and just kind of fold them over and seal them with the sticker to close it. And the items that I'm going to be putting in here that you won't find in the $10 are sticky notes and memo pads, a zipper pouch designed from one of last year's Patreon rewards, those little periwinkle journals I mentioned. I have a couple of all uniquely painted wooden ornaments and I have some tote bags. So I think, I don't know how many I have, but let's see what will fit in them and then I'll just start laying them out and packing them up like I did the other ones. cute as my $10 ones, but it'll do. It doesn't really want to stick. I have to use a staple and kind of extra close them, but good enough for me. <laughs> now it's time for my very favorite part, sealing them up. So I am using these heat sealable bags and I found these on Amazon. There's a link below if you want to grab them there. I get a little bit of a commission, not sponsored. And even though they have a zipper, you can use a heat press to seal these. So you have to use the little, I don't know if you can see, the little notches right here to rip them open and it's more fun that way at least in my opinion you don't have to use bags like this believe me i started using brown paper lunch bags when i first started doing mystery bags but this just gives it more of a blind bag feel 
and even though they have a zipper close, like you can't just open them and look what's inside, right? You have to buy it and then open it. So you can get heat seal presses for these, but that's a lot of money for something that a hair straightener can do. So this is already warmed up and all you do is just, and it's sealed, totally sealed. You're not gonna be able to see any of that, but it's sealed and it doesn't stay hot for very long. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and do one side and then I'll flip them. And they're all done. So I do have bags that are this size or that are this style for you saw the $20 ones that are bigger. And then I have some of the smaller ones that are for my B grade enamel pin mystery bags and my keychain blind bags when I was doing them. So you can get those on Amazon. And now my blind bags are all packed and ready for this weekend. So those are gonna go in with the rest of my inventory when I pack up for vintage days. And I really hope you guys are able to make it out if you're local to the area. It's a free event. Here's the map again, if you wanna see where I am. We are inside the Student Union Building, which is I think just a little bit of a ways from the outdoor area where they do actual vintage days. So that is how I put together mystery bags. And if you guys have any questions about anything about mystery bags that you might have, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you've made it this far, from last week's vlog, you will be curious about the big announcement I mentioned. And this won't excite everybody, but I know a lot of you guys are artist alley artists or aspiring artist alley artists. So this one's for you. By the time you are seeing this, my second business, Spooky Stickers, will be offering Stamp Rally Essentials. That means you can order your Stamp Rally cards with me. They will be print and cut. And any sticker orders, that have a Stamp Rally card in the order will automatically get a discount on all the stickers in the order. So that means you can order your Stamp Rally cards and all of the stickers or sticker sheets for the entire group that's doing the Stamp Rally, if you choose. And that discount on the stickers will automatically apply to all die cut stickers, all sticker sheets in all sizes and materials. So you can find that on the homepage under the materials tab at the top. You can see it under Stamp Rally Essentials and get your orders in. And with that, I'm gonna finish this vlog because there's still a couple things I have left to do to prep for the weekend. And I hope to see you guys at Vintage Days. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. And that's why I wish you the best and say goodbye. You start to get dressed and then we cry. Cause we both know it's gonna hurt. But not as much as this does. We had a good run. Don't say we didn't. I was your first love.